So this is me just wanting to do a small video on spatial and higher dimensional data indexing and querying. So some things about spatial data really, really quickly is that spatial data can be done, uh, you, it can be looked at in terms of the boundary, interior and exterior. And you can look at it in terms of these operations when you're doing uh, spatial data. Uh, now quickly, before I go into the actual like algorithms, I need to first introduce B-trees. So all the B-trees are essentially, it's just a way of um, holding the values in leaf nodes, which are the bottom nodes of, um, of uh, indexes which point to those nodes. So rather than holding all of the data and having to search all the, the data, you rather have all the data be put into buckets, into groups, like you can see there in those groups there. And as you insert values, these buckets will have to be broken up uh, and new indexes will have to point to those new buckets as more buckets grow and grow and grow. And that's the insertion and deletion of B-trees. So that's super simple what B-trees are. Uh, now I want to go over the actual algorithms, um, which generally use the B-tree method. So quadtrees uses a four division of a B-tree. So you can see in B-tree it's a two division, left and right there, generally. Um, in quadtrees it's always a four tree division, and this is region quadtrees. So how region quadtrees work is that if you have points, right, points have x and y values, they're 2D spatial points. Um, uh, rather than querying all these points, you can query the, the quad sections of four, um, which are divided evenly. So for example, if I have one point in a box, right, you'll just have that one, bo that one box around it. So it's not very efficient to, to use quadtree because it means you would have to go into the box, which goes into the point. And if all the points were in the exact same, uh, let's say, top left box again and again and again and again, then that means you'd have to keep searching through all the boxes which all just have one point inside them. Which is why it's better to have a bigger bucket size for each quadrant. So let's say that this entire quadrant, right, let's say it, could, it only allows four points. So I insert the first point, there's no problem. The second point, third point, and fourth point, there's no problem. You just have a single box. Then when I insert the fifth point, the box divides into four sub-boxes. Northwest, northeast, southwest, and southeast. So top left, top right, bottom left, and bottom right. It divides evenly in the very middle section of the entire uh, grid where all the points are. And now, uh, when I insert that fifth point, it might be, say, in the top left quadrant, the northwest quadrant. Uh, so you can see northwest has just um, the point 40, 45, which is A, so that point right there. So that's the region quadries, it's super simple, it's just space being divided evenly into spaces of four. And each um, subspace is a subquadrant where rather than finding all those points, you find the, the box, the quadrant, the index, and then just like that you have all the points rather than having to search for something. Uh, so now there's also R trees as well. Um, so with R trees, Essentially, you just have, um, again, it's the exact same thing as B-trees, but with, B with R-trees, um, there is overlapping of boxes. So you can see this one here, right? Uh, it allows, if you do a MBR, which is a minimum boundary re rectangle around multiple polygons, it's important to point out that R-trees and R-plus-trees are for polygons and quad-trees are for points, I should say that. So when you do a bounding box around multiple polygon uh, data type, um, you can actually overlap other boxes as well. So R tree only allows a single instance in the leaf node. So for example, um, you can see D, right? D is only in R5, that, that box right there, that top right box. It's not in R3, although R3 does overlap with D. Um, if you do an R plus tree, however, D will actually, actually be in multiple boxes that it crosses with. Um, so let's say, right, let's say, let's say with quad trees for a, sec for a second, and you can do this with polygons as well, but quad trees with a point. If I have a query point and I want to find all the points around it, right, then that means you can either do a linear search, so you can just go through every single point that you have in your database and find the points that are within some distance to that point in terms of x and y distance. Or you could use the bucket, so you could just say this point, find the outside bucket that it's inside, the parent bucket, then find the child bucket again and again and again until you're in the smallest bucket size. Then 
um, you could say all the points that are within that same bucket, just collect them all. That way you can skip all the other quadrants. And that's the exact same thing with um, polygons with arteries. So that's spatial data. That's a pretty, pretty good breakdown. Now let's talk about, um, let's talk about higher dimensional data. So with higher dimensional data, right, let's say rather than using uh, spatial X and Y values, let's say you have a car, okay? So we're going to say we have a car database or a car table. Um, this car table has certain features about it. For example, it has mileage, um, or actually let's just use, um, let's use people instead. So a person at a occupation will have a name, a salary, um, and some volume or something. Or going back to cars, you could say they have a mileage, a price, and uh, I don't know, mileage, a price, and a color. Um, let's say you want to have certain attributes of these two things, right? So you want to have the smallest mileage and the smallest price. And let's say every color is indexed by a number. So blue, green, red, blah, blah, blah is indexed by 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Um, let's say, right, that we want to have the minimum of all of these. We want to have the smallest mileage, the lowest price, and the lowest color index value for, for some reason, whatever that is. Um, so with Skylons, right, what you're trying to do, <coughs> sorry, <laughs> what you're trying to do is you're trying to find all of those points which are not dominated, um, by which I mean, um, I want to have, I want to find the row of data, the car, um, because you have a bunch of cars, right, and they all have their own mileage and price and all that, right? I want to have, find the car with the lowest price, so T7, and the lowest dis the lowest distance, lowest mileage, um, uh, so T6. So you want to find all of these points where there is nothing better than it in some in some at some axis, in some regard of some attribute, um, some column, you could say. Uh, so if you want to use PostgreSQL, I don't know how you spell it, Post Postgres SQL. <laughs> you can use a PostGIS um, extension, and it actually looks like that skyline of, and that's how you do something like that. You can find the min of a certain column. So, for example, I want the min mileage, and let's say you want the max of another column. Let's say I want the highest price for whatever reason. You can do that with skyline of. Um, and then, right, uh, an easy way to do skylines is actually just to use B trees. And essentially, what you do is that you um, uh, you order the B trees uh, in terms of each attribute. So um, you can find, for example, like price and the distance, and you can find, hey, um, H2 is the maybe not the lowest price, but when you compare it to all the other attributes, it may, may be the lowest in distance and the lowest in everything else. For example, if I take H17, I'll just zoom in so you can see a bit better. If I take H17, um, H17 is way down there in price, so it's not the best in terms of both. H2 is the lowest in terms of price, it's the highest at the top in price and a distance. So once you've ordered all of the attributes, the price, the distance, the color, um, whatever else, then you just find whatever index is the same, that's the lowest between all of those, right? You just find H2 is the lowest in price, or it's lower than some of the alternatives, and it's almost the lowest in distance, so H2 is the best across the board. So that's basically what skylines are. Uh, now I want to quickly want to talk about managing temporal data. So when you have temporal data and you use R trees, let's just say, right, um, you can't just add T addition to X and Y. Because when you add that third parameter time to x and y values, the MBR, the bounding box around those polygons, the, the, the bucket, right, it will grow exponentially as time increases. Which is why there's something called um, TPR tree, which essentially looks at uh, the points or polygons, whatever you're looking at, and it finds the direction that they are moving in. So if I grouped by 4 and 5, you can see point 4 and 5 are actually the closest, right? Oh, there we go. You can see point 4 and 5 are the closest. So if I grouped 4 and 5, then on the next iteration, the next second or the next hour, however however fast you're capturing um, the input data, 
Then on the next one, four and five are gonna move away from each other, right? You can see four is moving to the left and five is moving up to the north, right? So now four and five, right, are up like, there's five up there and there's four way out there, right? Now you can see that the MBR, the bounding uh, rectangle around these two points is huge. Which is why I use TPR tree to look at what the next iteration will be moved into. And you will group those based on the same um, the same movement. So right. So I can see that five and seven are both moving up together. So I will attempt to group five and seven together. That this is on the first iteration, you can see four and five are very close together. Then uh, four and five would be a huge box, and then so on. So yeah, if I grouped 5 and 7 together, considering their future values, then they would be, the, the MBR would be a lot smaller. You always want to minimize the MBR, the minimum bounding rectangle. And um, when it comes to comparing um, something with temporal dimension, something that's uh, temporal data, you can use LCSS, um, which is lowest common subsequence. So if I have a bunch of uh, values, right, the lowest common, common subsequence, right, if I have A, B, C, D, E, F, G, uh, G, H, right, um, and then that's one sequence, we'll call this S1, S1, and then we have another sequence, which is uh, S2, we'll just say it's um, A, G, and then we'll have another sequence called S3, uh, we'll call it D, A. Right. Um, so we know that the common subsequence between 1 and 2 is closer than 1 and 3. How do we know this? Because A comes first, and then following all the letters, then G comes next. So A and G is the same subs subsequence. They're the same order of characters or values. So think of this in terms of X and Y. I'm just using uh, characters because it's easier to look at. Um, so this is the exact same order that the characters appear in in uh, S1 when I'm comparing the two. If I look at S3, however, I see D and then A is back there, so the order is wrong. So therefore S3 and S1 aren't very similar, whereas S2 and S1 are very similar, except for all the characters which are missing in between. Um, another thing to also look at the Wikipedia of, which is pretty interesting, is DTW, uh, which does a very similar thing. And then I also want to talk about one other thing is uh, managing higher dimensional data. Um, that is, if you have a huge number of dimensions, right, you can actually try to break all these dimensions into like a single value, a single dimensional space. Um, you can see there it's 1.3. So if you have something with a, um, a mileage and a time, a ma mileage and a price and a color and all, the other, all these other things, right, um, you can actually group them all into a single value by using something called pyramids, and I'll let you look at this yourself some more. Um, but essentially, you get all of the dimensions and break it into a pyramid, right? So here I have four dimensions. Um, I break every single one of these dimensions into a pyramid, it looks like this. And then you find the point distance to the height, which is the middle of the pyramid, and that gets you your, your, your value for that point, whatever it is. And this can be done for any number of d-dimensional uh, points or whatever. Any number of dimensions. Um, and quickly, I just want to talk about one last thing that's root planning. Um, so, if you want to find the shortest distance between a source and a destination, so with a road network like uh, ambulances or fire trucks or something, uh, you can actually look at something up uh, called De Gigstra's algorithm, which is about finding the shortest path between a source and a destination. And the alternative to this is the A star algorithm. Um, so, De Gigstra's algorithm is that it will create a circle around the source point to the destination point. So uh, imagine a source, some location, I'll just say some location, uh, here, right? And then we have a massive um, uh, search area. So this is our source, and our destination is the shortest distance between the source and the destination. So this is my entire search area, right? This entire red area is all the area of paths I will search to get from the source to the destination. Um, and the A star algorithm will find the exact same thing, however how it works is that it will use an ellipsis rather than a circle. So you can see A star algorithm is actually better than Dijkstra's, but it's the exact same idea though. 
it will find all the roads coming from, say, my house to the hospital. It'll find all of the road best paths until it finds the absolute best path. So that's just some stuff I wanted to go over.